Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Tips and Tricks Tuesday and I hope you enjoyed the flip through, the bonus flip through of the big kids coloring book Fairy Houses and Fairy Doors that I did earlier. This is by Dawn B. Boyer. Um, she is a wonderful, wonderful lady. Uh, she has five of these wonderful books. I was wrong. I thought there was only three, but there's actually five. So we will be flipping through those throughout the week. And uh, earlier when I did the flip through, if you uh, watched it, you will know that I told you that I was going to color a page in this book. And I did. And I colored this wonderful, wonderful little fairy house and finished it up and now we're going to give it some some extra little bit of pizzazz and give it a wonderful background i got some schmutz on it uh give it a wonderful background and uh maybe add, add a couple of things but we're going to do that with these fantastic king art gel sticks i was asked when i did the king art uh, gel stick review in the comments, somebody asked me to do a background with them, so y'all know how I do that and how that works. Of course, I am using a technique that was taught to me via another um, YouTube channel, which is the it was it is DJ's Coloring Escape, and I will of course leave a um link in the about section below um for her channel so if you want to go and look how she does it you can definitely do that now i have a couple of different tools that i use that she doesn't use uh, one of which is these wonderful things i love these things you just stick them right on your finger and then you've got a sponge on the end of your finger and you can just do all sorts of things with those. She also uses these, which is just a, a basic makeup brush. Um, this one here, I've got the little tiny skinny one and a little tiny round one. And we'll be using some of those as well. I've got really big ones too, but they're, they're not really needed for this application. So I don't have them out. All right, let's get started. So hopefully you can all see that okay. Um, I have colored this. I colored this with my old Sharper Fabian uh, colored pencils. And that's it, just Sharper Fabian color pencils. And then we're gonna do the background with these. So let's start with a green, cause I'm gonna put this wonderful little fairy house in a garden. So we want greenery and flowers and sky and stuff like that. So we're going to actually do kind of a collage type of thing. We're not going to put a extreme definition in, but we are going to add little bits of greenery, a little bits of flower colors and little bits of sky colors. So let's start with the grass area. And we have, let's see, grass green, ha ha. So we have a color called grass green. And what we do is we take our wonderful palette. This is just a clear plastic palette. We take our wonderful palette and we put the color on the palette. Now you can put as much color as you want on here. Um, you do have to load it up kind of, kind of thick. I found out the hard way because if you don't your brush will pick it all up and stick it to the very back of the brush and then you won't get any on your picture. Now I'm going to take this small brush because the area that we're going to do is down here for the grass and you just scoop it all up into your brush and load up that brush the best you can. Get as much of it in there as possible. And then in short little bursts, just put in that green. Okay. 
And as you can see, it gives you a nice light grassy green color. Now, I need more on my brush. And I may need to put more on the palette, depending upon how much we get down here. And as you see, you see, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure, a huge amount of pressure on this brush. I'm just putting enough pressure that it gets down into the bristles and actually pulls that color out. I'm just going to put a little bit more in here. So we've got our grass green and I'm just going to go back over top of where I had it before. Keep a, a handy wipe or a wet paper towel handy. This is something that I, silly me, forgot to do. But if you keep that handy, you can use it to wipe off your palette. I do have some paper towel here somewhere. Unless the kids have stolen it. And I will uh, just use a paintbrush to remove that bit of grass green off there. So I've used up almost all of the grass green out of this little brush. So now I'm going to put in little bits of accent color. So we have dark green which we're going to throw down as well. Let's throw it down onto the palette and pick it up with your brush. And then just a little bit of accents. You don't need to rub it in. You can just put it on top. If you want to rub it in, you can definitely do that. This is one of those things that whatever you want to do, do it. You know, it's it's a fun part of any art is it's all up to you what you do with it. If you want it to be really, really dark and rub it all in, rub it all in. If you want it to be really, really light and just leave it with just the grass green, just leave it with the grass green. Do whatever you want to do. I'm just going to get this down. I wanted that grass to be a little bit greener especially down here in the shadow areas. All right, so there's the grass. So we've got the entrance all done up here. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do was an entire background in green colors. Now, because I want the greens in there. I'm not going to wipe off the, the palette because there's some dark green, some light green, and some medium greens here now. I'm going to take this medium green and I'm going to put lots and lots of that down. And we're going to take our bigger brush and we're going to scoop that all up. And we're just going to Do it random all around this little house. Now, if you find that your brush is getting a little dry, because we are doing this with a dry application, now that I've put a little bit down and I've got those darker lines showing there, I can rub this and spread that around a little bit more. Now I'm going to go into the lighter green as well here and pick up some of that too. 
and some of the darker green as well. And we're just going to throw as much of that down as possible. Now we're, this is, um, it looks a little messy to start off with. And as we go along and start adding more and more definition to it, you'll see that it isn't as messy as it looks to begin with. So I'm going to pick up some more of that darker green, medium color green. If you get little chunks, just take your brush and break them up. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make this look like there is a little house in the middle of a flower bush or in front of a big flower bush. Like I said, I'm just taking as much of the color off the palette as I can get. Oop, let's throw that over there. and getting it all the way around the house, all the way up to a certain point. And then we're going to put in sky colors. But we're, we want this to look like the top of a bush. So make sure that your greens are, you know, defined enough that it looks like a part of a bush, not just green behind it. All right, so that's it for that one. Now we're going to take that lighter green again, the grass green. And we're going to put down a big old whack of that. And like I said, sometimes you need to put down lots and lots and lots. Like if you're using a big brush like this, it's best to put down as much as you can get down because that big brush will suck it up. Now we've got some definition in there with that lighter color. Put in a little bit of shadow with a darker color and a smaller brush. So I'm going to take the darker color here and we're just going to do the same thing. Scribble it down. Put down lots. It doesn't matter. If you don't use it up, you don't use it up. Not a big deal. And of course, after the green is done here, I'm going to wash this right off. So that... Uh, when I put the flowers in... We won't have any green remnants in there. Now the top of the bush, of course, is going to be more of a lighter color because it's up towards the sky. So we're going to leave that a nice light color. Remember where your where your light sources are coming from. And as you can see of the roof, it's coming this way because here's a shadow here. This is all shadowed here. Same with up in here is all shadowed. But this part of the roof this way is all light. So the light source is either coming down or coming forward. And in my imagination, and since I'm the one coloring the picture, that's all that counts, it's coming forward. So the sun is where I am and coming this way. And that's the, the one thing that everybody has to always remember when coloring a picture or looking at somebody else's picture 
is the only person that matters in interpretation is the person coloring it. You know, you can interpret it after it's colored any way that you want to, but you got to try to look at it as the person coloring it saw it. Sometimes the person coloring it does have to take a look at it and look at the shadows, look at the clues that the person drawing it gave you. And, you know, follow those a little bit. But, you know, if you want to make it so that the, the sun is, is up here in the sky or, you know, that sort of thing, by all means, do that. That is your interpretation and your imagination, and that's what matters. Now, the book edge is here. So this is only going to go, the bu bush behind here is only going to go to the edge here. However, it goes further, obviously, because, you know, the edge of the picture isn't the end of the world. So we're all done with the greens. So we're going to put the greens aside and we're going to see if I can find my paper towel because the children have run off with it. Oh, sick. Yeah, they have little boogers. Oh, no, there it is. I found it. They, I probably just tucked it down where I couldn't see it. Now it's rolling across the floor. All right, so what I've got is I've got a sheet of paper towel here. And I'm just going to take the palette and I've got a big paintbrush here that has water in it. And I'm just going to uh, put my sheet of paper towel down. And because I should have done this beforehand, but didn't, I'm going to cheat and just use the water out of my paintbrush. <laughs> and just soak that paper towel down a little bit. And then just give it a wipe, give it a wash off, and flip it over and give it a dry. And it's all nice and clean. So if it's still a little damp, of course, grab a fresh paper towel and dry it off. Try to make sure it's as dry as possible. However, having it a little damp isn't going to hurt anything because these are watercolor so now we're going to take some pinks and some reds and we're going to make some nice flowers so let's grab scarlet here these always remind me of lipstick they look like a lipstick i used to color with my mom's lipstick all the time when I was a kid. And now I get to do it without being a kid. <laughs> and we're going to take our finger stick. And this is a finger stick that I used for reds before. And I'm just loading it up, getting as much on the finger stick as I can. And I'm just going to put little round flowers. Try not to make them too uniform. Like that one was really uniform. Okay, now we're got the red down. I'm going to take the next one down, which is a purpley red which is Rose. And I'm just going to take the Rose. I'm going to put it down on the palette. This one is being a little more stubborn. So you just got to press a little bit harder. Once you get that color flowing, that color moving off of the stick, you're good to go. And then we're going to fill up this stick 
the finger stick here all that color and we're just going to add a little bit here and there Just giving little movements to the little flowers. Now we're going to go through and we're going to take our smaller brush here. And we're going to take a lighter color of pink. And this is just regular old pink, straight pink. I'm just going to fill the board. Any major chunks, try to pick them up again with your paint stick and just fill in as much as you can get on to your brush. And then I'm just going to try to give a little bit of definition. To those flowers and it doesn't have to be perfect nothing is ever perfect so of course it doesn't have to be perfect so Of course, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so, and sometimes that gets me in trouble because I end up not liking what I'm doing and having to stop myself from redoing things because even though I don't like the way it looks or I don't like the way it's laying down, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I just have to get over myself sometimes because sometimes no matter what you do, some mediums just have a will of their own. All right, so we've got the, per the colors down for that bush. Now I'm gonna take this bigger brush and I'm just gonna scrub it into each other, into just blend it in together a little bit just to soften soften the uh, transitions and get them into one cohesive look. Sort of like that. Now we're going to take a blue and I'm going to do it as light as possible. So I'm going to take the pale blue right here. And of course I open those upside down so they fell out of there. So this is supposed to be the pale blue. Is this the palest? Let's see. I think that one's a little bit paler actually. Oh, I didn't have the pale blue. That's why. That's pale turquoise. Oops. <laughs> it's like, that does not look like pale blue. All right, so we're going to take the pale blue and we're going to put in a bit of a sky. 
Now, of course, this isn't going to go all the way up high into the sky because it's just above a bush. So you're go not going to get the, the darker blue colors of a summer sky, but you are going to get the lighter blue colors of the start of the skyline. And that's what we're going for here. It's just those lighter blue colors. Now I have loaded this right up with that blue and we're just going to grab as much of it as we can onto this finger stick as you can see. We've got a whole bunch up there. And then we're going to start over here. And I had a bit of pink in there so we're going to have a bit of pink in the sky. Which is fine. And I'm just going to fill that in. Now I'm going to put down a little bit more blue. Hopefully this time we stay away from the pink. <laughs> not, not a big deal. It, like I said, just do it as it comes. Let it go. And it will turn itself out. So once again, just loaded up the palette with as much blue as I could get down there. And then we'll load up our finger sponge. And we'll just keep going. like we might need a little bit more blue. Well, maybe not. I think we can also, another way that you can work with this type of medium is you can actually just go directly from the source right onto your finger stick. Now this will give you a thick layer instead of that thinner layer which might be a little bit more difficult to control. And as you can see I have put bubbles coming out of the chimney. don't know if you can see them. But that gel stick didn't stick to any of those wax um, or not even wax because sharper fabin is an oil base. Well it has wax in it I guess. But it didn't stick to the pencil crown or the colored pencil whatever you want to call it and it let those bubbles look like bubbles. I'm just going to add just a touch more blue. And I am going directly from the stick. And there we have a background. And of course you can put little bits of blue in behind the bush and whatnot. But there we have a background. Now I'm going to show you a close-up just to show you a little bit better, um, especially around the bubbles. What I mean by it didn't really go too much into them. And of course, we're going to take a closer look and erase anything that we need to erase from them.
So I'm switching over to the other camera here. And I'm going to turn on that light. Maybe. There we go. So as you can see, into the bubbles, there's not a whole lot of color. And that's the amount of color that you would want in a bubble because it's going to pick up the color behind it. Now my camera is a little bit off color, as you can tell, because my hands are not that orange or red. So it is picking up a different tone for some reason. And we will have to fix that. Just one quick second. I really, uh, my husband is working on getting it so that I can do this uh, just with pushing buttons instead of having to go to weird places. So let's change the contrast to that so that it's a little bit more, yeah, that's closer. There we go. There we go. I look normal. So as you can see in the bubbles, there is a little touch of blue, but there isn't a whole lot of blue in there. Um, because of course you want your bubbles to reflect the, the color from behind them and that sort of thing. Now this one here, it is a little bit too round for my liking. So I'm going to take, where is it? My eraser, if I can remember where I put it, I just had it. There it is. <laughs> I'm going to take my eraser. Now this is a Prismacolor uh, triangle, triangular eraser. And I'm just going to remove, or not even remove, just soften that edge a little bit. Once you do that, you can dust it off. Go back and find your green stick. Where's the green? And just put a little bit more of the green of your choice in that area. Now I think with it being close to the skyline there, we're gonna do it with this lighter green. And I'm just loading up the brush right from it. And we're just gonna put in a little bit more of that lighter green around those flowers a little bit. Just like that. And same with over here. These ones aren't too bad because they're a little bit lighter. Further into the shadows. Just going to touch up the green areas that we need to touch up a little bit. And there we have our background. So I hope you all um, were able to enjoy this video and like the background that we have made here. Um, of course, this is just a little bush that's in the background. It's got very little definition. It's just there. So we're going to switch on back over to the other camera so that we can take a look and see exactly what we've done here. So as you can see, we've got the house, which I previously co colored with the Sharper Fabian um, colored pencils. And then we have a wonderful little sky with some bubbles. And as you can see, you can, if you feel like it, clean up the edges of your picture just by using a eraser. Now I have colored in the book, which is not normally something I enjoy doing. So the edges of the book are definitely a factor. Of course, I went above the edge of the, the line there with the bubbles, but 
I like bubbles and I got carried away. <laughs> But we have used the King Art gel sticks. I keep on calling them crayons. And these are mixed media artist sticks. Um, half a dozen one, half a dozen of another. <laughs> I keep calling them crayons. So that's how they feel to me is like a nice creamy crayon. But that's how you make those wonderful, wonderful backgrounds with that sort of thing. Of course, you can do a gradual um, blend as well, which is what I did in my picture of the mermaid that I posted on Facebook um, on, I think, Sunday. I finished that one. I'll give you a peek. Hopefully, there we go. If I can't get it out without knocking everything over. Ow, or pinching my fingers. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, I've used a red and then into an orange, into a yellow, and then down into the, the yellow into a, a blue, which has created the yellows into into the water but you can do that gradual um, progression by putting down a layer bringing in a new layer just going over just the edge of it and then brushing them together uh, same with into the yellow as you can see I've brought the orange down and the yellow up so you just brush it in and blend that that line and soften it up I have sprayed this so it is fully sealed unfortunately when I was brushing it because I didn't have it pinned down at all I wrinkled it <sighs> which I was kind of hoping spraying it would help or putting it in the book would help but it doesn't seem to be <laughs> but that's another form of doing that basically all I did for that was I used these finger sticks and I did the same thing I did here but I went across back and forth until that area was filled once that area was filled I brought it I took a clean one and brought that color down just like you would with a shadowing or a shading of a pencil crown or a colored pencil sorry um, but pencil crayon, colored pencil, same thing. Um, you just bring it down until it reaches the point where you want that other color to be. And then you start your other color at the top of that light area that you've brought down. And then you bring that layer down and then you go on to the next and so forth. So basically, I'm just going to show you here really quick on a clean page if I can find one let's see so we've got let's see where is it we've got this wonderful purpley pinky color here and I need more of it <laughs> so let's start with that so I'm just going to grab a color this is maroon and I'm just going to fill my finger stick with this maroon. You can do it directly from it or you can put it on the palette. Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go right across and fill this whole area that I want filled with that color. If I need more of it, I grab some more of it. And as you can see, it's dark up at the top here, but it's going to start getting lighter as I go down. So now it's at the point where I want to add a new color. So I'm just going to bring that down into a light, light, light layer of that color. So I've added all the maroon I want. Now I want to add say 
let's put blue. So we're going to have to take a darker blue than this light blue that we have. Just because the light blue isn't going to blend too well into that maroon. And I'm getting it all over the place. Because typically you would just use your palette and I'm being lazy. <laughs> and getting it all up into my fingernails and everything else. All right, so I've got the darker blue on there. And then we're just going to bring that across into that maroon and bring that down. Now this is where you start to do your blending. You've added that blue into the maroon. So then you blend it together. Now this area in the center is where you want your darker blue color. So then you add your darker blue. Another thing that you can do is you can put right on the board or on the paper and just blend it in. Now of course we're going to get down to a point where we want that blue to be lighter because we're going to blend in the next color. So the next color we want is going to be this lighter blue. So I'm just going to do it right on here. You don't have to put it on a palette. You know, it works really well if you put it on a palette and pick it up with something else. But you can do it right on there. This does use a whole lot more of your crayon than if you were to put it on a palette. Just saying. So that you you can say, oh, you can't say to me, oh, well, I've followed your instructions and now I have a third of a crayon. Well, that's because you did it in the wasteful way. Well, it's not really wasteful. It's just... Uh, uses up more. Okay, so we've got the maroon, the dark blue, the light blue. Let's see what else. What else can we throw at this? Oh, let's go with some metallics. Let's go with, hmm, let's go with gold. So now we know that blue and yellow is going to make green. So this is a very, very yellow gold. So I'm going to actually put it directly on the palette. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is very um, full of mica. It's got lots and lots of of little tiny part particles which make it shimmer. It's not sparkly, it's shimmery. And I want to get as many of those little particles as I possibly can broken up so that when I put them on the page they they spread, they don't look clumped up. So we're going to take this and we're going to add it into that blue. And bring it on down. And bring it on up. And we're just going to combine those two colors. Leaving a dark line of the color that we expect. And moving a lighter color down below which we're going to add another color to. If this is the end of your picture, say this is your skyline and this is where you want your picture to end, just keep going. You know, go down as far as you want to go, making it lighter and lighter and lighter as you go. 
now if you have say like my picture there um, of the mermaid I had a rock here and the mermaid and then I had water down here you just bring it down as light as you can to the very very bottom where you want that next color to be say the seafoam green or the aqua color and add your aqua color bring it up into your yellow and that is a sunset type background I of course used blues and or not blues reds oranges and yellow in my background for that mermaid but as you can see it just keeps going <laughs> And if you're not careful, you're going to do what I just did and end up bending your page. So make sure when you do this, especially if you're doing this on a coloring book page that has been removed from its book, which is what my mermaid was, the pages are a little bit thinner. This is 67 pound cardstock that I'm working on right now. And as you just saw, I was able to put too much pressure and bend that. So if you're doing this on coloring book page out of the book, make sure that you either hold it down in the exact area that you're working in, like I'm doing right now. It's not going to get on your hands. If it does get on your hands, it is washable. So uh, either hold it down exactly where you're you're working so it doesn't fold up on you or tape your whole page down so it doesn't fold up on you because though that coloring book page is a lot flimsier and will bind up on you where it's going to bend and you're going to end up with a crease in it just like I have in mine All right, guys, I thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and understand better how to use your gel sticks, your crayons, your um, wonderful, wonderful King Art supplies, as well as, you know, anything else that you've decided to use because it's the same concept pretty much as you would uh, using pan pastels, using um, oil pastels, even those the, the inks, gelatos, anything like that. It's all about the same concept. It's spreading it the best you can with assistance from tools. Now you can also do this the same way they do um, with, sorry, I'm trying to move things so I can get to something so I can show you. Um, with oil pastels, they lay down a large area. They cover color in the entire area. Then they take a tool Sometimes it is a paper towel or whatnot. So I'm going to show you with paper towel. Now, I don't know if this will work the same way with um, gel crayons as it does with um, oil pastels. I cannot guarantee that that, that will work the same way but we'll give it a try and we'll see. So when they use gel or oil pastels, they cover an entire area, very, very thick area. With a lot of color.
and pretty much all the colors that they want to be in that area before they do anything with those colors. And then they take the corner of and they just blend them together. Now this works a lot better with oil pastels than it is with these gel crayons. Now if you had it wet like this one here you can move it around a little bit better. So there's different ways that you can use these. Another thing you can do is you can do your drops. And this works really, really well for water droplets or bubbles, you know, things like that. And you just let it sit for a couple of seconds. And then you go back and you take a look, where's your drop? And you just soak them up. I didn't leave that blue long enough. But as you can see on the purple here, you have little spots. Things like that. And I've got one right there. I think that's all of them. <laughs> but that is another technique and, and another uh, thing that you can do with these to add texture, add motion, or add um, other elements to your work is just by putting little, little drops of water on them. Um, or you can, of course, move that around and blend those together with a little bit of water. These are water soluble. So you can drag that color as far as you want it to go with a little bit of water or as far as it'll want to go. Now, because I've rubbed this into the um, paper, it's not moving as far as it would if you were to say, put it on a palette, break it up with the water and then use it but it's definitely something that you can do at a later time if you're doing just small areas. All right, guys, <laughs> that's enough of that. Thank you all so much for watching. And of course, remember to um, you know hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, uh, leave me a comment. Um, of course, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. It does give you, uh, well, hit the, ring the bell as well. If the subscribing does give me the uh, knowledge that what I'm doing is is what people want to see and that more people want to see what I'm doing. Uh, this little bell will tell you when I put up a new video. And I always put up a new video at least once a day. This week we are celebrating the artist, um, who has done this book, which is uh, Dawn Boyer. And she has over 180, 108. She has a whole bunch of these big kid coloring books. This is the first of Fairy Houses and Fairy Doors. There are four more to come. So we will be reviewing those and doing flip throughs of those throughout the week. So please watch for the bonus flip through and um, stuff like that. 
of course tomorrow is work in progress Wednesday and as you all know we're still working in watercolor and tomorrow's work in progress Wednesday will be this wonderful wonderful picture I will be doing some more work on it now that it's dry and uh, maybe maybe finishing up some fish hopefully we'll have it all finished up soon that's the one thing about watercolor is it does take a little bit more time and a little bit more patience. <laughs> Something sometimes I am lacking. Of course, um, if you want to become a member of our Facebook group, you are definitely welcome to do so. Please do fill out the application form in full so that uh, we can get you in as quickly as possible. Of course, we don't accept anybody that doesn't fill out the questions on the application. It's three little questions, and that is a security um, feature of our group. Um, of course, one, one other thing is I have recently become an Amazon affiliate. So any of the links that you click on my videos from recently, probably about a week ago, um, will be affiliate links they do give me a couple of pennies per purchase at no cost to you whatsoever those pennies go into a fund for the channel and for content as well as prizes shipping and handling stuff like that so if you purchase anything from amazon or you know anything like that try to hit one of my affiliate links it does help me out quite a bit and I do appreciate it. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and spending this time with me. Of course, remember to always relax, color, and stay safe. Bye-bye for now, guys, and I will see you uh, tomorrow. We will probably have another bonus flip through of the next book in this uh, series, and uh, of course, we'll have Work in Progress Wednesday live tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks for watching.